Hey, hello, this is Andrea, and I want to welcome you to another edition of Movie Love. We all, we all have um, our movies that we love to watch uh, in October around Halloween, and I wanted to tell you about four newer movies that I'm hoping will become Halloween classics. I'm really enjoying them. Um, I've, I've listed them in order of age appropriateness. So starting with the first one. Okay. First up we have the movie Coco. It is rated PG, one hour, 45 minutes, and it came out in 2017 from Disney and Pixar Studios. Uh, it is set during Dia de los Muertos, which is the Day of the Dead in Mexico. And this is a time of year where families will remember their loved ones who have passed away. A young boy named Miguel, he loves music, but his family does not like music. They are always turning music off. And he's very upset by this because he wants to, he wants his whole life to be filled with music. So he travels to the land of the dead to try and find out why is this a problem? Why is music a problem in his family? It's a very, I find it to be very fun and joyful m movie. Uh, it's got great animation, of course, because it is a Pixar uh, animation film. The, uh, the music is amazing. And, uh, you know, it's got its share of mischievousness, but uh, it's a nice heartwarming story in the end. And it's, I think it's entertaining for the whole family. Okay, next up we have Goosebumps 2, Haunted Halloween. It's rated PG, uh, one hour and 30 minute uh, running time, and it came out in 2018. This is by Columbia Pictures and Sony Animation, and it's based on stories by R.L. Stein. So the, the story is these two young boys, um, they're looking for stuff to sell, I think. I can't remember if it's a yard sale or it's something like a yard sale. And they go into this old house and they find a manuscript. And when they open it, it uh, somehow releases a, a, a dummy, a ventriloquist dummy named Slappy. And of course, Slappy goes on to, to cause all kinds of mischief. Now, if you're like me, you find, uh, <laughs> I find ventriloquist dummies very creepy, you know, creepier than just regular dolls. So, uh, but I do love how fun, like it takes every part of Halloween and kind of puts it on display, like all the fun characters and there's an adventure that happens and it, it could fright, this movie could frighten young children though. So I have to tell you that cause there's, um, you know, there's a couple jump scares and just, you know, the dummy is really creepy. I have to keep telling you the dummy is very creepy. So. There's that. But all in all, I'm looking forward to seeing this movie again. Maybe I'll watch it this year. Because I saw it last year at the theater. I liked it better than the first Goosebumps movie. So let me know what you think about this one. If, if you've seen both of them, let me know which one you liked better. All right. Moving on. I don't know if you can see this uh, poster here. But the third movie is Scary Movies to Tell in the Dark. This came out this year, uh, it's rated PG-13, has a running time of 1 hour 48 minutes, and it was uh, produced by Lionsgate and CBS Films. It's directed by Andre Overdahl, I don't know if I'm saying that name correctly, but um, he directed Troll Hunter, which is the... I don't know if you've seen that movie or not, but it's it's kind of become a cult classic, especially after it was on Netflix for a very long time. It's um these guys, they're out in, I can't remember what country it is, I'm sorry. I want to say it's Norway or something like this. And they're searching for trolls because they heard that there's trolls. And I don't... It's a fun movie if you get to see that. And he also was the director of The Autopsy of Jane Doe. And it's produced by Guillermo del Toro. This movie is. 
So a group of teenagers, again, um, well, the other, the other story was kids, but a group of teenagers go into an abandoned building and this, an abandoned house, and this house has a lot of history uh, to it for the town that, that they're from. This is set in 1968, by the way. So it's during the time period when people are being drafted into the Vietnam War. So people the age of these teenagers are being drafted. So they go in and they find this handwritten book of stories and they take it out with them. And the look, cause the one girl's really, I think she's interested in writing. And um, as she reads the stories, they seem to start coming true. So that becomes, you know, a very scary premise for the movie, of course. Um, I like that the, the main, to me, the main star of this movie is the stories. The stories are all, they all have this feeling of like, I wouldn't say urban legend, it's more like suburban legend or rural legend to them, you know, and um, there's like a feeling that, what do you know of these stories? And I, I don't know how to say it without giving some of this stuff away. But I'm a huge fan of the physical effects. Um, well, I love physical effects, in, or practical effects, I'm sorry. I always call them physical effects, but they're technically called practical effects in uh, horror movies. And that's when, you know, you have masks and makeup and you have dummies and stuff. You have less CGI, you know, you have more, some animatronics and that's practical effects. And, uh... This movie has a lot of lovely practical effects. Well, I don't know if you'd call them lovely. <laughs> so this movie is for teenagers and adults. And uh, yeah, there there's one gross part in it. And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a tiny bit about it because it is in one of the previews, one of the trailers. And that is, there's a story with uh, a facial uh, acne, you know, like a large... Pimple. And that was the gross part of the movie to me. Um, but it wasn't too bad. You could look away. <laughs> you could look away if you have to. I sound like I don't know how to deal with horror movies. I've seen a lot of horror. Look, my two favorite horror movies are Cabin in the Woods and House of a Thousand Corpses. I do not recommend either of those for children. Okay, so my favorite quote from this movie and one that I thought about for a long time is... Stories hurt, stories heal. So let me know what you think of this movie if you watch it. I want to buy it when it comes out on video. I, I don't think it's out on video yet, but it might still be at some theaters. All right. The last movie I want to talk about. <laughs> this is definitely a movie for adults. It is It Chapter 2. Uh, rated R. Two hours and 49 minutes running time. Um, I saw it twice in the theater. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's based on the book by Stephen King. This movie is produced by New Line Cinemas and Warner Brothers Pictures. And if you haven't seen the first movie, you know, this is going to be a terrible thing to say, but you don't have to see the first movie to see the second one. They show enough of what happens. Like, they go back and forth in the timeline. And, uh... It's really amazing to see the actors they chose for the adults of the child versions of themselves. They look very similar. These are all great performances by these actors. Uh, the cast includes Jessica Chastain, James McAvoy, Bill Hader, and of course, Bill Skarsgård, who plays the clown, okay? And as someone who's read the book, I would like to say that I appreciated the second film much better than the first because they included some parts of the book that they had not included in the first part that I had really been upset that they didn't include. Uh, I'm not going to say what they are, but basically I'll give you a general information. This is not a spoiler, but the, the thing is that it is not just the clown. Like It appears differently to different people in the book. Um, so they show some of that in this movie. They show some of the other uh, forms that it takes uh, in the book. And also they showed a more uh, 
a more genuine representation of what the clubhouse looks like, the way it's described in the book. Very much enjoyed this movie. Uh, it's creepy. It has, it has uh, practical effects as well as some digital enhancements. Um, and the story actually leaves you up to some interpretation, I think. So, These are my four choices for movies that I believe could become new Halloween classics. If there's some newer Halloween movies that, that you've enjoyed, please let me know in the comments below. If I hadn't, haven't seen them, I will definitely go out and check them out. So, until next time, have fun and enjoy the movies.